Look at this. Look at this. I understand this is a little white crocus. Of course, I can't see the flowers, but uh, I just don't like knowing they're there. It's, it's a great exercise, uh, mind and body for gardening, and I really enjoy that. But look at this stuff. It's already screwing. But here I am squatting down. Look at my knees. So I want to get ready for doing this type of stuff. Before we actually get started, we're going to want to warm up. It's like any exercise program. You want to prevent the injury, so you want to get used to what you're going to have to do. Gardening can be a very aggressive sport. I'm going to be out here for a couple hours. Try and start slow, do lighter things, heavier things, do things one or two times, walk away, come back, do it a couple more times until you get into the swing of things. But even before you do that, a couple things to think about for doing uh, mechanics of the knees especially. If we just kind of crouch down, I want to think about doing some little circles, get the knee joints used to this. This supports the spiral mechanics of the knees, going inside to outside, outside to inside. I've been doing martial arts on and off for 27 years, massage therapist, we're just going to kind of squat. When we do this, we let the knees roll out to the side a little bit. As we start to go down, I want to go. I want to put that weight out onto the ball of the foot on the outside, with the heel coming outside and then back up. A lot of people might say that's bad mechanics for your knees, but you know the knees are designed. When we stand, the one bottom part rotates out and the top part rotates in. That's the lock home mechanism. So if this is true for full extension. This allows our bones to stand one stacked on top of the other. It allows us to stand very passively. As soon as we start to bend our knees, there's a muscle in the back. His name is Poplidius, and he actually derotates that to unlock. He's called the key that unlocks the knee. So if we follow that into, extrapolate that as far around as you're going to go, you want that heel coming out and the toes coming in. If you were to ever kneel, you want to let your, your heels come out and your toes stay together. Whether this is in yoga, whether this is cleaning things, although you gotta watch the pressure underneath your knees as you stand up. Again, going from the weight on the outside of the ball of the foot under the fourth and fifth metatarsals, as you stand up, allowing it to rotate over the weight going onto the first and second metatarsals. Do these kind of knee exercises, feel the weight distribution as it goes from the inside, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then five, four, three, two, and one. You can start practicing by squatting down long before you go outside, back up, squat down, and back up. Start doing it for 30 seconds of time, work your way up to it, be good to your knees. You're going to miss them if they go. We'll see you in a second. Now that we understand a little bit more about the mechanics of the knees, let's try and train and get ready for the muscles. Because of squatting up and down, you want to do this early in the season so that May, June, you're used to doing a lot more. If you need to, if you want to, you can use a, a fence, make sure it's a sturdy part of the fence. You can start just doing squats, arms out for balance. Let the weight go out on the outside of your ball of your feet, all the way down, let your knees go out and back up. So your bum goes straight down over top of your heels and your knees stay behind your knee, behind your feet. A lot of people like to say as long as you can't see them and then back up. You can also, if you need to, for stability, use something like the fence, hold on to it, go down, and back up, and down, and back up. Just getting used to doing little things. Something I do, if you're an avid, avid gardener and you're really out it quite a bit, and you're in a squat position, you can start just by touching your, your ground like this, let yourself squat down, grab the ground, and then back up, and then back down, and then back up. You can also come down, take a couple of steps forward to, I know it seems kind of silly, but it's good for the muscles of your knees. Again, the weight, keep your toes in, your heels out. Toes in, heels out, just a couple of times. Get used to that because you're gonna be doing this a lot. Another thing that you're gonna be doing a lot of is bending. I don't bend without tightening up my hamstrings. Mechanics of the back puts a lot of pressure here, especially if you're reaching out here. If you're going to do anything bending forward, you want to keep everything close to your body. Ideally, you're going to be picking it up. Later on, we're going to talk about weed picking. There's a lot to do about that. But think about anything you want to lift, keep it close to your body and lift it up. Another thing, don't look at what you're lifting. We'll do that in another session. But if I was to look at what I was lifting, I'd be bending my back inappropriately. I want to look away from what I'm lifting and just pull it straight up so I can come up more with the legs. When they say the legs, I tighten my hamstrings. As I lean forward, tighten the hamstrings. Pull down on the ischial tuberosities, 
is where they insert and they come from. Don't leave it up to your low back. Touching your toes. Pull with your hamstrings. Pulling the hips down in the back. Tighten, tighten, tighten like you're making a bicep muscle. Tighten that muscle hard. Then you can go down nice and easy. As you come up with this, pull and stretch. You can get your point bones ready for moving. Because you're going to be doing stuff like this. You want to kind of change stances. Again, I've been doing martial arts a long time. But martial arts came from exercise training. Whether they were cleaning, gardening, it was all hard work. Or Chinese, Kung Fu. Okay, so try and get yourself ready for what you're going to be doing. Train a little bit here and a little bit there. Inside, think about your gardening. March 17th and I'm way behind. Let's go cut something down. Got to be careful where I step because there's plants growing all over the place. I got these old peonies that I've got to cut out of here. Um, sometimes we get ourselves in awkward position. I get right into my work. You'll notice this cage over here. I emptied that earlier because like I told you, I want to do things a little bit here and a little bit there. Not so much to strain myself. I thought about doing this video and I went and got the camera. So what I want to do is I want to stay down low. This is here. I'm in a squat position. If you can see my back leg, again, the heel's out, toes are in, knee pads are always a good idea. Start to trim this stuff down. I don't want it to stay too long, because I'm gonna get that ischemic burn. Another thing is even in this position, tighten these muscles to support this low back. Don't stand here, relax. And just nice and, there's no nice. You gotta, you gotta be stable while you're doing things. I'm gonna do this for a minute. Maybe I didn't quite get it all done. I'm starting to feel a little bit of a burn. I'm just gonna stand up. Again, tighten all the muscles to do that. Take a bit of a break. Take the pressure off your back. Repetitive, repetitive. Stretch a little bit in between. We'll show you some hamstring stretches, uh, hip thigh stretches um, in just a moment. But uh, once you warm up, it's a good time to stretch. Get back at it and go at it all day. It might take you all day, but it's an enjoyable thing. It's more of a physical journey than it is a destination of finishing that because you only got so many gardening seasons and you want to make sure you're able to enjoy them as many, as long as possible. I'll see you in a minute. Here with my favorite time of the day. It's break time. We talked about growing up, we talked about doing things, a little bit here, a little bit there, from easier to harder. Now we're break time. When any, any time you got a, a beat of sweat, great time to do stretching. Again, the early stretches are just getting ready for the activity. The middle stretch is kind of just to keep things loose. If you want to increase your range of motion, the time to do that is at the end of the activity. I'm not quite done for the day, but we can use implements around the house. I think what we're going to call this is at home fitness club because this stuff can make you feel, look, and be better. It's like going to the gym. There's lots of activity here. The problem is we tend to do too much of it the first day, but the reason I like gardening is because it reminds me of how things go through a life cycle. The things here go through a life cycle very quickly. We go through hopefully a lot longer, but we can guide our growth much like we can guide a growth of the, the garden. If you don't believe me, take a look at my face. I haven't shaved for a couple of days. I've consciously chosen to grow my hair like this, but eventually I'll shave and I'll change and I'll mold and grow my looks. The goatee is just kind of for fun ever since I got my black belt. But I want to use some implements around the house to help guide our, 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 our healing now. So the rake, you can put behind your head, stretch your arms out, and just get a nice stretch across. You can even rotate slowly side to side. Get a gentle stretch across the chest. Keep your spine aligned and look in the direction you're going nice and easy. Because we're using our backs quite a bit, you might want to stretch out the backs. Muscle here, I want to rotate. This is going to help the, ver the vertebrae work the way they want to work. Reach down for the inside of your one knee and up on the ribs to help stretch out the low back. Hold 30 seconds for each stretch. Go and do the other side, reach for one knee, rotate, reach for the inside of the knee, and then stretch. About 30 seconds. If you think it looks weird doing stretches on your front lawn, can you imagine how it is doing stretches on your front lawn with a videotape? <laughs> stretch out the hamstrings and the back of the thigh muscles. I told you every time I lift, I pull with the hamstring muscles. I want to keep them nice and loose. I might go up one step, two steps, maybe three steps, straighten the leg and just lean in, stabilize. We're gonna talk in a second about three points of contact. We can stabilize and just stretch, 30 seconds. Come back off and go one, two, lift up, three, lean in, stretch the hamstrings, 30 seconds. Try and get your knee, your, your, your chest to your knee. Think about your nose to your toes. 
I don't want to stretch my nose to my th thigh. I don't want to curl my back. I want to reach and stretch. That reminds me, hydration. It's a nice sunny day, do a little bit of work, starting to sweat. It's a good idea to stay hydrated. I want to work on stretching some of the muscles in the, the, the core area, the hip flexors. So using the same stairs, one, two. I want to just tighten my stomach a little bit, tighten my back, and then lean forward. Get a gentle stretch in through here. Gentle stretch through the hip flexor area. If I feel like I want to, I can kind of lean away, hold on to the railing, get a whole stretch on the side and front. 30 seconds. Do the same thing here. Up two steps. Lean forward, heel on, on the floor. And just gently stretch. 30 seconds. Back of the calf. Holding on to the stair. One calf or two. Let your heels drop off. Do one at a time. You get a lot more range of motion when you use a stair. You can also sit. If it's too hard for you to do stuff like that, you can sit on the stair. One leg forward, reaching chest to your knee, nose to your toes. Reach out, gentle stretch, one at a time. You can do two at a time. I can do this on the bottom step. It reminds me, you can do tricep push-ups too. I <laughs> work out everywhere. Reach for your toes if you're able to. I'm not overly flexible, but I, for a 40-year-old, I do okay. For a 90-year-old, I'll be doing amazing. So just reaching for that. You can also back up on the second step, cross my legs, pull my pant leg up, bring my knee up. I can stretch out the back of the hip this way. 30 seconds, I can lean forward just like I'm casual and relaxed, just watching the sunshine and people walk by. 30 seconds like that, grab this knee, bring it across to the opposite shoulder. 30 seconds, stretch out the back of the hip. Especially for conditions like sciatica, these are really good preventative type stretches. Reaching forward, pulling on the pant leg, pulling this knee up. Just wait for a few seconds, then lean forward. Nice and relaxed. I don't really have any weight on my thigh or my knee. And I'm going to pull this way, 30 seconds. Help to guide our growth. This would be a little bit low. Well, I can do it sitting down. Reach up, grab a, a railing. I like thumb up or palm up. It's mechanically how they support the, uh, the way the shoulder wants to work. And then just look away. Stretch out the front of the chest. I use my opposite hand on the shoulder and help to push it back. Because we're really stretching out the chest muscle, the deeper chest muscle. Not the superficial one that goes to the arm. It's the one that pulls the shoulder blade forward and down. And you see a lot of this type of protracted and uh, protracted and pulled in shoulder blades. We want to stretch that back out. Now that my break is over, let's get back to work. I want to show you a couple of quick things. I want to clean up this garden. I got to get some crouching in. So I've got my knee pad and unfortunately I only have one. But you got to avoid that idea of doing everything on one side. So I'm going to go down, especially when you're on cement. This is a great thing. So I'm just going to clip some of this. Again, take, if you can, take a look at the back leg. I want the heel out, the toes in. And I'm just going to clip some of this stuff. Ah! One of these days I got to talk about tools. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've got this kind of uh, started. My back's starting to give me a bit of a hard time. So I'm just going to kind of stand up. I'd switch my knees. I could switch my knee pads, put something else down. But I'm just going to squat down lightly, finish this job. The next one's in a little bit further. So we want to talk about three points of contact. If and when possible, I'd like to have three points of contact. My hands are being busy though. So to get this one here, that one's not bad. I might decide I might have to reach in a little bit further. As I reach further out, this is putting more strain on my back. I could squat both ways, again, on the outside of the ball of the feet, by the fourth and fifth toes, the baby toes. I can squat there, but if I find that's getting too much, the further I reach out, the harder it is on the back. I've got this uh, little stump in here. So if I was just pulling something, I can stabilize myself on the wall and lean and reach in like this with, with something. I can get that, but I need both hands. So I want to get myself in there as much as possible. I put my foot right up on there, then I can squat. I'm inside the garden. Again, tightening the back of the thigh muscles. I want to share the workload. I don't want just one group of 
muscles doing it. And I think we're clear. Okay, I gotta get this plant way back there, so I'm gonna put my foot on this other piece of wood over here. And then I can squat right down again. I want to respect the mechanics of the knee and I want to keep that foot in, heel out, and bend the knee, reach right over, keep it close to my point of balance. Take the pressure off my back. If I need to, I put my, my weight, my chest, on my thigh. A lot of people may not be able to do this. You could hold yourself here, get in close, squat down. The thing is to avoid reaching. Share the workload. Many hands, many joints, many muscles. Makes a much more enjoyable experience. Don't forget to stretch. And uh, thank you for joining my uh, <laughs> description on how to start gardening, getting used to doing the garden. Respect the mechanics of your shoulders, your back, your, your, your knees. And we're gonna talk about lifting here on KenRoachRMT.com. Like I said, I think we're gonna call this At Home Fitness Club. Because you can work out right here. You can guide your own body's health and, and, and growing to increase muscle range of motion, uh, joint health, um, strength and toughness to prevent injuries. It's all about injury prevention because you can come and see me as a massage therapist once you have an injury, but you'd be way better off to start taking care of yourself while you're doing these activities and start to guide your growth much like you will in your garden. Thanks and enjoy your gardening season. Here's another tough job in the garden, spring cleanup, raking. This is a great opportunity for some of those stances we were talking about, shifting the body from place to place, uh, position on the bull. This is what a lot of the uh, martial artists used to use to fight with if they absolutely had to. So training, you want to palm and push and push and push as much as you can and reach your leg out to so take your body with it as you reach across. Stay active. Do about 10, 15 on one side, flip to this side. So move your whole body, move your feet. Remember the mechanics of your knees, bend your knees a little bit. Don't forget to do both sides. 10, 15 times and switch. We want to talk about lifting, that's some of this yard waste and the blue uh, recycling bin. We want to talk about lifting. General principle is if I look at what I'm lifting, I'm using my back. Now, sometimes you might choose or have to do that. If you do have to do it, this is going to be a lot of hard work on the back, especially if it's out here. So you really want to make sure that you're right on top of it, bending your knees, but we're going to talk about spiraling your knees because they don't really bend. If you have to lift, you want to pull down your hips with the hamstring muscle, just like making a muscle tight here, you do the same thing there. So if I lift, ideally, I don't want to do it this way, but if I have to, I'm going to bend my knees, spiral them out, I'm going to contract here, and then just lift straight up, and see where my legs are, I'm going to be a kind of centralized and lifted kind of straight up. Again, if I look at it, I'm bending my back to lift it up, and this is not good. If I don't look at it, so I look across as if I'm looking in a mirror, I'm watching myself. Again, I bent or spiraled my knees down. I took a brace that's a little bit wide. I can actually just rest my elbows on it. And just It's not that heavy, so I can just lean back and it'll, uh, it'll start to lift it for me. Try to use mechanical leverage. And then I just have to stand up with the legs. Then if I reach out here, it's going to be harder on my back again. If I put it right here, especially rest it on the little part of my pelvis and my knees, and then if it gets really heavy, I can rest it now as part of my center of mass, and I can come walk with it. It is a little bit awkward, but so is just looking tough and just grabbing it, like, muscling it around. The reason I'm not moving is I really don't know what direction I'm supposed to be going. But when I walk, I'll bend my knees, and I'm going to start taking this off out to the back. Anyways, I'll see you in a bit. Another spring cleanup job. Got the shed packed full of stuff. I got some of the lawn chairs out, but I wanted to get that last one out and I wanted to show you guys some of the crazy things that I absolutely crazy things I do. 
this gas can's in the way. Um, again, same thing. I don't want to reach in. I could move all this stuff out piece by piece. Uh, a lot of times we're just a little too lazy for that. So I just want to get that chair out. So I just want to get this gas can out of the way. I want to get myself in there. I don't want to reach for sure. So I could bend down, grab the gas can and stand up. It's not very heavy, this one in particular. I also might want to reach, if I have to, I stabilize myself on the shed, grab the gas can and I just kind of convert the pressure. I can take this leg off, the weight off this leg and then stand up. Um, if it was heavier, I might have to do something else. But same thing, if I want to reach across, put it somewhere, I want to stabilize myself on something that's not going to move. And then I lift the gas can. This one's not very heavy, like I said, but it's going to help get the, uh, the weight off and then I can slide it in. If it was heavier, I definitely want to be stabilizing myself. I want to get myself in here. Now, again, I don't want to reach. As I reach, this is a compromise in my back. I should be moving the lawn more out, would be the ideal way of doing it. I can lift this back leg up to give me some balance. It's going to put all the force over my front leg, gets me a lot closer, but then I can start to come back here as I go. I'm going to kind of pull with my hamstrings, pull with the back leg. I'm going to lean the chair forward wherever it gets out of, so it's not, I'm not, I don't have any weight on it, off of it yet, and then I'm just going to kind of switch my, my uh, shift my balance and my weight, push off of the back, the front leg, until the weight's on the back leg, one, two, and try and get it in close, get in close to my center of mass, so that, again, it's resting on me again, the chair's not very heavy, I'll be carrying two or three of them once I get these all out, but it's about making sure that... When I move now, I don't really want to twist my body. I want to move my legs as much as I can and shift myself around and then kind of like back out. I don't want any spinal movement. I don't want any rotation. I want to be able to move my legs. Again, spiraling the knees to let it down. Simple, but you know what simple concepts are? And uh, by hurting your back a little bit here and a little bit there, by being conscious, we're talking about conscious, positive influence into your body as you're doing things, so that you're limiting any negative results and then you're maximizing the positive results by putting a positive influence in, gentle stretch. I swear, more and more I believe that for any acute and chronic issue, active and passive range of motion, gentle stretch, gentle contraction will fix any living tissue. It'll fix it, it'll grow it. Um, you, have, you have influence over how your body will function, how your body will look. Um, just encourage you to do it on a regular basis. Here I am. I could use this wall. I could use a stretch here if I needed to. I can stretch out my chest. I can stretch out. I can use the door frame. The calf. There's real no reason why we don't stretch. I can use the door frame on my calves and let my calves stretch down like that. Okay, I got three chairs here, so it's going to be a little bit heavier and certainly a little bit more awkward. Um, I've already carried them from the back, but I just want to show you how I lift them up. Um, again, I don't want to look at them because I'm going to be using my back. I don't want to reach, so I want to stay in close as much as possible. I might want to bend my leg, but these are all soft, so I'm going to put my thigh right to them. I'm going to get the weight going back onto it and then just kind of stand up and bring my leg in underneath and rest it again against my body again, just like we did with the blue bin. As much as I can, rest against my body brings it in. I don't have to reach. If it's out like that, it's really going to be quite hard. Tighten up the back muscles, tighten up the thigh muscles, as if I'm grabbing the ground and pulling backwards, but just grab that ground and stabilize yourself from the ground up. We should be talking about lifting weights, but that'll be another day. But uh, that was a little lesson on uh, lifting. Remember the knees spiral down, they spiral up. They don't just flex and extend, flex and extend. The elbow's a simple hinge joint. The knee's a very complicated spiraling joint. When you lift, don't look at the object. Don't reach for the object. Stabilize yourself on either side, center mass. Three points of contact if you need to. And stabilize and then lift. I do the same thing if I'm doing like a lap uh, pull up. Stabilize myself and use a dumbbell and lift. But it's a three points of contact principle. Get yourself centered and lift. And uh, don't forget here, tighten the back of the hamstring. Very important. Even if you're doing like dishes, we'll talk about that a bit. Laundry, lean in forward. Tighten yourself, stabilize your core. It's not just the core here. Everybody talks about the importance of having a strong core. First of all, it'll only do you any good if you actually turn it on. Secondly, it'll only do you good if, if you stabilize it with the hamstring muscles and starting to tighten up the thighs when you start to use them. Some activity may be required for uh, uh, your body will do things naturally, but uh, it, it helps a lot if we can if we can assist it 
and kind of put it on manual operation. But for that, you have to understand how the body works, how it wants to work, so that you can learn how to support it. But if you learn how to support it, you'll minimize your injuries and you'll certainly uh, grow bigger, better, stronger, uh, faster and more efficient and less chance for injury. And that's the goal here. Hi, and thanks for joining me as Ken Roach, massage therapist here, another edition of KenRoachRMT.com. We're looking at uh, general things that go on around the house. Uh, we're going to be looking at taking some groceries out of the trunk. Uh, we talked about lifting. We're going to carry on with some of the principles and uh, talk about uh, some of the things that might uh, potentially go wrong in the shoulder, tendonitis, and such like that. Again, I'm not just uh, showing you some general principles. So, got some heavier items in through here. I want to talk about a three point contact. I don't want to be reaching deep into the trunk. So, a three point contact, I can put my hand on here, feel inside the bag there. I may choose to one hand or the other, lift it up. Pushing into the car will allow this to come here, and then I can just set it down very passively. Otherwise, I would have to bend, reach, grab. It's a lot of pressure. It's a long lever. This is a long lever from the middle of your back. You want to lift with it close to your center. So in here, I do the three-point contact, lift it, or another three-point contact and lift it this way. It's going to be hard on the shoulder. I'd rather use the bicep. Lift it up. It's going to support that. It's only a couple pounds, uh, 10, 15 pounds. Come in here. Another one, three-point contact. Lift and press. Easy support myself. I always, you know what? I figure if I had a, pro, a bad back, that's what I would do. And if I'm going to do that when I have a bad back, I should do it when I have a good back. If I want to pick up the two bags here, I like to do things symmetrically as much as possibly. So I want to bend, take an athletic stance. I know it's only about 30, 40 pounds, but in strongman competitions with two, 300 pounds in each hand, they call this a, uh, a farmer's walk. And walking is going to take like, any athletic event takes like a bent knee and athletic stance. So so should this. Unfortunately, sometimes we're walking a long time from the grocery store home or taking the bus, and you're left holding your bags like this, and your arms relax and like, pulling down on that, and everything, including concrete and steels, subject to stress, fatigue, and failure. So we stress the muscles to fatigue, and then we let them rest, and they train to get stronger, and that's what we do when we're in the gym. When we're at home, if we have to do things for a prolonged period of time, like holding these bags for 10, 15, 20 minutes, jostling around, or um, activities where I have to do things again and again and again repetitively for many, many times until that activity is done, that strains us to stress, fatigue, through fatigue, to failure. And that's what we want to get avoid, and that's that type of thing when you get muscles that are tight, you just let this kind of fall. If you're carrying with one hand, then try and switch it as it gets tired. Think about stress to fatigue and rest it. Stress, fatigue, and rest it. There's a muscle in the shoulder, one of the rotator cuff muscles, supraspinatus. It, uh, it's one of those, it's called, it's nickname is the suitcase muscle for holding your arm out like this a little bit. It's gonna get tired. After a little while, share the workload. Bend the knees as you're walking. As it starts to burn a little bit, I try to avoid getting like, sustained contraction of those muscles. That's a good reason, it's a good way to get uh, supraspinatus tendonitis. Anyways, I should get this stuff in the house. And uh, I'll see you later. KenRoachRMT.com at Home Fitness Club. <laughs>
They say the proof is in the pictures, and here's mine. At 28 years old, after becoming a massage therapist and certified personal trainer twice, I entered a competition where I gained 24 pounds of lean muscle and reduced my body fat to 8.38% in just 12 weeks. Unfortunately, I didn't win that competition, but I did get a pretty good tan. Another thing that I did, most exciting, most dangerous things I've ever done, was downhill skiing and downhill ski racing, totally blind. Didn't do as well as I wanted to there either, but I did learn a lot. Learned a lot about me, learned a lot about you, how our bodies work, how they don't work, how they can work better when we work on them. And now that I'm done, I'm a little bored and want to share my knowledge. I love teaching, I do public speaking as much as I can. They're not just principles to, to get better by, these are principles to live better by. And I just started doing some stand-up comedy in the past of a while. I remember my first time on stage, I was terrified, couldn't stop thinking, I'm gonna fall off. <laughs> and I did. I have a lot of fun with that. Now I want to expand my internet presence and my ability to help other people feel, look, and be their best, or at least better. By all means, please pass this around to friends and family. Sign up to get a regular blog. Ask me questions so this can be more about you. I'd be absolutely thrilled if I can help you figure out something that you've been working on for a long time. I don't care what you do, I can help you. My name is Ken Roach, I'm a registered massage therapist and you're on KenRoachRMT.com. I had a great time with this event. I uh, do a lot of health fairs. Um, I'm really interested in corporate and other private type events. If you're interested, please uh, give me a call. Find my uh, email address, KenRoach at Rogers.com, KenRoachRMT at Rogers.com or take a look and check us out on KenRoachRMT.com. Thanks for having me. It's a little bit of traction. Make you a little bit taller. Take a lot of stress of the world off your back. And we are clear. Don't stop clapping, don't stop clapping, it's real. short guys do everything you can thanks for coming out um, as a massage therapist I would encourage you when everybody tells you to take care of yourselves take it seriously get and stay fit it matters um, 40 years old and I got the body of a 28 year old she's 150 bucks an hour but it's all worth it <laughs> my name is Ken Roach I'm blind but I hope to see you guys next time if you want to see me you can see me at KenRoachRMT.com